Geeks. So I was initially confused because I thought that I'd already discussed the Galaxy A7 before remembering the myriad of phones in Samsung's A series. It is hard to follow, but then choice is always good. Being a budget line, the A series does often boast some surprisingly impressive features and specs, and the A7 is no different. An AM OLED screen for one with a resolution of 2220 by 1080, and this is surprising in and of itself because higher resolutions are still not particularly common among budget lines, let alone an AM OLED screen. Add to that an Exynos, 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 7885 octa-core CPU, 4GB of RAM, 64GB of storage, and a 3.5mm headphone jack, and you have a terrific option that's a fraction of the cost of the mainline models. Continuing with budget phones, the Honor 8X is the latest release from Huawei. Getting the least important aspect out of the way, the 8X looks stunning. A large 6.5 inch display, again boasting an impressive resolution of 2340 by 1080 with a tiny bezel and a vibrant glass design. But the phone itself is no slouch. The Kirin 710 octa-core CPU gives the 8X some good power for its budget, and add to that an impressive battery life and you have a solid all-around device. From the outset, the RX17 boasts a couple of specs that really caught my eye, 8GB of RAM and 128GB built-in storage. Right now we seem to be caught in a divide between phones that make use of cloud storage or built-in storage. Personally, I lean more towards built-in because I like to have full control over my own content, and the RX17 provides just that. Couple the 8GB of RAM with the Snapdragon 710 CPU chip and you have some great performance to boot. Most impressively though, at least for me, is Oppo's wonderfully named Super Vu charging, which gets the RX17 to 100% in just over half an hour. Maybe you don't feel that it's all that exciting, in, in which case you are wrong. And moving on to my top 10 phones of 2018. And number 10 is the Galaxy S9 because I'm really impressed at its success after the exploding Note 7 fiasco. At number 9 we have the Huawei Y9 with a great battery life, which is always something I love, and it boasts surprisingly high specs for its budget. At number 8 is the Moto G6 Plus which is an excellent example of a budget phone, great resolution and responsiveness thanks to a modified version of Android. At number 7 is the Zenfone 5Z, as it almost undercuts the top brands with competitive specs for a cheaper price, and it even works while wearing gloves. Number 6 is the LG G7 Thin Q, very durable thanks to a shock resistant chassis, something more phones really need to prioritise. Number 5 is the BlackBerry Key 2, because it's a terrific comeback for BlackBerry, still uses a physical and customisable keyboard, which really does satisfy its niche audience. Number 4 is the HTC U12 Plus, boom sound combined with focus audio recording and virtual surround. Number 3 is the Nokia 3.1, which, as with the BlackBerry, is a terrific return to form for Nokia, and has a great use of HDR and finally ditches the Lumia software. Number 2 is the Vivo V11, as an impressive AM OLED screen that makes full use of space and rapid charging makes for a very appealing device. And finally, at number 1, we have the Google Pixel 3. Google OS continues to give a user-friendly experience, a stunning OLED screen using clear image, and some quirky features make the Pixel 3 a worthy upgrade. If you're buying or selling, whether that be films, games, tech or phones, don't forget to check out the website at webuy.com.